have the evaluator tell oh. us a little bit about what her purposes are. Yes. Charlotte <coughs> is speaking from the Storytelling Manual, which is a wonderful manual, and if your goal is to ever become a great Toastmaster, you should use this one. This is the second speech called Let's Get Personal, which is intended for the speaker to create and tell a story based on her personal experience without using script or notes, of course. And she will use vivid descriptions and dialogue to bring the story to life. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. I believe the time is six to eight minutes. Okay. Charlotte is going to tell us a story this morning from her childhood. She grew up as a farm kid, and her title is Farm, Ra farm Raised, Charlotte. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Yes, I'm a farm kid. I grew up in the south end of the Salt Lake Valley. Now, as a kid, and in my childhood, and my teenage years, I felt unfairly treated. Farm kids have lots of chores, especially in the summer. We had acreage, and we grew all of our own produce, and had a lot of livestock. Also, out on the farm, there's no sidewalks where you can roller skate. And having a lot of sidewalk, we had to feed animals twice a day, clean their pens, gather eggs, and that was year-round, even during school. Both of my parents were farm kids. My dad grew up in southern Idaho on a small farm, one of eight children. My mom grew up on a farm on the shores of the Great Salt Lake in Utah. She was one of nine kids. Now, my dad, Morris, was a very shy, introverted type of guy. He didn't mix much with people, but he was a great farmer. During World War II, he was the manager of a dairy farm in northern Utah. So he had a draft deferment. After the war, about a couple of years, they had a tragic fire, and my mom and dad lost their home and everything. They took a little bit of insurance money that they got, found an egg ranch in Draper, Utah, and that's where I was born and raised. Now, my dad was a great gardener. He came by it naturally, and he loved the land. I remember in the summer, he'd get the tractor out, he'd till the fields, and we planted about an acre of personal garden. One of the big things that we planted was potatoes. I remember after he tilled the land, we would cut the seed potatoes. And he would dig every potato hill by hand. We would put the seed potato in, and we had to make sure the eye faced up so it would sprout. Then all summer, it was weeding and watering, and in the fall, we harvested. My dad planted almost a half acre of potatoes for our family every year. Now, my mom was totally opposite from that. <coughs> She was an extreme extrovert. She was involved in all community and church activities. One of her big activities was 4-H clubs. She taught many of the young people around us all the homemaking skills and gardening skills. Yes, she was also a great gardener. I remember when I was quite small, my mom raised cucumbers for the pickle factory. Now, everybody knows how fast cucumbers grow. And cukes for the pickle factory have to be picked twice a day. And the pickle man brings his truck with the boxes in the back and his little scale down the road every morning and afternoon. I remember once in the afternoon, I was a preschooler. My mom took me out to the field to pick cukes. A storm came up, and it started to rain, then blow, and then hail came. So my mom took one of the big tin tubs that we watered our livestock with, turned it over, and put me under it. It was cacophonous in there. It was noisy. But I was safe. Now, as a farm kid, summer vacations usually consisted of a week up on the family farm. 
I spent a lot of time in Idaho with my cousins in the summer. I remember one incident. In the afternoon, I was with a bunch of cousins, and my older cousins, it was my Uncle Platt and his boys that were running my dad's family farm at that time. The older cousins put all of us little ones in the back of a pickup truck with some dirty ditch dams and sharp shovels and went to turn irrigation water. They took off lickety-split over the rutted roads, the furrowed fields, and we had to hang on for dear life with all those sharp shovels flying around the bed of the pickup truck. Also, I spent time with my mom's dad and mom. They had their family <coughs> farm well into my adulthood. Now, my mom's dad, Grandpa B, we called him for Van Grove, he was a very steadfast farmer. He would walk the land with a field implement, and you knew <coughs> what his job was. He was a farmer. He raised lots of vegetables and things for the canning factories, and he also had hogs. He was a very determined man. Uh, you didn't cross him. He was uh, quite firm in his convictions and beliefs about kids and where they belonged. But he was also a kind man. Every year before the Utah State Fair, he would make sure that he bred one of his sows, his hogs, so that she would farrow in time for the state fair because he knew how much kids love the little pigs. My grandfather was also the most frugal man I ever knew. He was not borderline cheapskate. He was cheapskate. <laughs> my grandma always drove around in all the old farm trucks, three-quarter tons, pickup trucks. I even remember her going to the store with the tractor. <clears throat> when I was in junior high school, we were at the grandpa and grandma's for dinner once. And Grandpa said, we're thinking about buying a new car. It was quiet. Everybody looked at him like, what has happened to Grandpa? <laughs> a few weeks later, we heard that Uncle Paul took him into Ogden to the car dealer. The next time we went out to the farm, I looked around, and the old pickup was parked by the house, and I did not see a new car. So I said, Grandma, I thought you guys were getting a new car. She said, we are. We had to order it. Well, I was excited. I was in junior high, and I thought, ordering a car, you got this fancy stuff. But my mom knew her dad, and she said, Dad, why did you order that new car? And he said, we wanted one of those white Ford Falcons, and they didn't have what we wanted on the lot. They had to order it because I'm not paying for a radio in a car. <laughs> yes, in the 1960s, you could order a car without a radio. Wow. Growing up on a farm, <clears throat> as a kid, I felt unfairly treated. But as I matured into an adult, I realized the lessons have been valuable that I learned as a farm kid. Patience and perseverance in any process can produce a plentiful harvest. And I still love potatoes to this day. And when somebody offers me shelter, I'm grateful, even if it might be noisy or stinky, whatever. I'm thankful for the shelter that I get. Also, when you get tossed in a situation, life starts getting rutted, bumpy, rough, like an e-ticket at Disneyland. <laughs> Just remember, find a good place to hang on, especially if someone like your crazy Idaho cousins are dropping. And also, frugality. I learned it as a kid, I often apply it, and it has served me well. Even a car without a radio runs good. I remember that old Ford Falcon into the 80s and 90s was carrying my Uncle Paul's kids off to school. Farm raised, it worked for me.